Hi everyone, it's Christina from Card Creations and More by C. And today I want to make a scene card with you. So, um, we're going to get started. I'm going to try to keep this to one video and I hope that it works. Um, my base is a craft card stock from Michaels. It's um, 10 by 7, which... Um, Wait a minute. Yeah, so it turns out to be a 5x7 card, scored in the middle, and sorry about that noise. My dog's out here bugging me. Toby, go, please. Come on, leave me alone right now. Sorry, I put him in the living room and he just broke his way free. So what I want to do is create a little scene. We're going to be using this tree from Serenade, which is one of my favorite trees. I love it. Um, I actually cut it twice once in each color green and I snipped off half the leaves with one of the cuts and laid it over top of the cut that had all of the leaves. This way you get the two-toned leaf look. Um, I also have this pretty gazebo from Freshly Picked which I um, cut with craft cardstock and then this lighter beige color from um, Recollections brand and then I went ahead and put diamond stickles that are already dry on my pink flowers. So I think that's going to be really pretty. And um, I just wanted to mention, I already put pop dots on these just to save time. Um, on the tree I wanted a little bit higher than the gazebo so I used some foam squares and as you can see I had to cut them to get them to fit on some of the leaves. But I watched a video on Cricutology blogspot.com um, and she makes her own foam dimensionals which turn out to be a little bit thinner than what you buy and so I went ahead and got some of the self-adhesive foam and I ran it through my Xyron and you end up with strips like this that you can just cut into any sizes that you want so I was able to get these long skinny pieces for the back of the gazebo and so anyway I just wanted to mention that I thought it was really cool so, and it's actually cheaper because you can get a big piece for 99 cents at Michael's. So to start with, our mat is going to be one eighth of an inch smaller than our card base. And it's going to go ahead and become our sky. So what I want to do is figure out where I want my grass to be. Probably, usually I go about two thirds up with the grass. Now, um, I cut my grass using the Grass Punch. It's a Border Punch by Martha Stewart. It's my favorite. Um, it's so quick and easy, and I just love it. So, oops, sorry. Dropped my ATG gun. So anyways, I really do love the grass. So I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on my card and figure out where I want this first. I think my first layer of grass is going to go like that. So I just lay that down. Now I actually have three layers, so I'm just going to put another strip of adhesive right on the green that's already there. And then I'm just going to come up here and lay down another layer. So this goes pretty quick. Sometimes um, I alternate the two colors of green just like I did for the tree. Hopefully I didn't move my camera too much. Let me check. I just tapped it with my ATG. No, we're okay. Um, and that looks really nice too, but this time I wanted to do the lighter one and you'll see why in a bit because I have another color of green that I'm going to use later. So, um, actually since this is going to go all the way down, I'm going to put a little strip on the blue layer too, just to kind of hold it in place better. So, we just want to line this up nice with the bottom of the card. Now I just like the dimension that it gives to do more than one layer, which is why I usually do three or four layers of grass. Minimum two, but usually three or four. Then I'm just, you notice I left it long and I'm just trimming off the sides from the back so this way it was perfectly sized. So now we have our grass in place against our blue sky and that looks really pretty. The next thing I have some clouds that I cut from Create a Critter and we're just going to go ahead and put some of them on our card. And what I like to do with the clouds, I'll usually pick a couple that I glue right to the actual, like the whole cloud down. And then I usually have some 
overhanging and I'm just going to go ahead and use my zig. Um, I usually use my zig on pieces like this. I find that it's easier. And just kind of press it down. And I think I'll take one more and put, put one going down there. Another thing I like to do is hide a cloud partly underneath the grass. I like the look that that can give too. So if I can get it under there, I'm just going to try to you have to kind of get it so that you don't see, yeah, like that. That part's okay. All right. Now I think we'll take a little piece. Now the other thing I'm going to do here, you'll see, I'm only going to put zig on this part of it right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it and then snip it off. So this way, now you've got a piece with a nice straight edge that you can actually put in another area. But I think I'm not going to put the whole thing, so I'm going to take this. So you don't have to be confined to just putting whole clouds. You can just hang them off and snip it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this one. This is just kind of how you set up your background. And then there's usually something that's going to be in the foreground. Now let's see, I'm thinking I'm going to do, I think I'm actually going to do this one kind of like long ways, like half of it. So it'll go like that. And then, thinking like right there, maybe. Press it down. So you're just kind of setting up the sky and I like it to look like the scene keeps going off into the distance. That's my favorite, so. And I think next, I might just put a little piece of that up in that corner and then that's going to be it. So I actually have a couple of videos planned for this weekend. Um, I need to make some more keychains because I owe a few to people. So I'm planning on making a video showing how I make my keychains. And also um, my craft area tour so look out for those coming up this weekend so now as you can see we have grass we have sky and we have clouds and what I will probably do is um, just try to quickly I probably won't be able to do it all I'm gonna try to get the ones that are gonna be sort of covered or I'm just gonna quickly do this I'm just taking a blue jelly roll pen I like the look of stitching the clouds with it. It kind of brings out more of the blue in the sky and sort of accentuates the clouds since it's usually like white against a light kind of blue. I just find it kind of makes them stand out more. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just started using this jelly pen. Got it for $1.49 at Michael's and I just kind of found that it looks really nice with clouds. And I only go around the edges that would actually be the cloud. So I don't um, I don't worry about going through um, the part that's against the edge of the card. Okay, so there we have it. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, I think we're going to adhere our gazebo next. So I've got it all ready to go and I just want to figure out where I want it. Probably like that on this part of the card. So it's raised up just a little bit. It's wicked pretty and you can see the scene going on behind it. That's why I wanted to do all of my stitching on my clouds first. I can do that one at the end though um, because I am going to run out of time I'm afraid. And then I think what I'm going to have to do is to get all of my tree, I may have to just snip off the bottom of it. So I think I'm going to have to do that, just kind of cut it even, yep, with the bottom of it. So that's what I had to do with that and put it push the pop dot more. So the bark of the tree is just a little bit shorter. So I really wanted the tree to fill up the other half of the card. So um, I don't know. I'm going to run out of time, I'm afraid. The next thing that I was going to do was just sort of, I made a couple of little clumps of grass to kind of place around. Um, 
Sarah from Live, Love, and Scrap, she loves to use this grass. She just puts um, adhesive, I think, on the bottom part of it and kind of leaves the top so that it kind of comes out free. And this was why this time I decided not to two-tone my actual grass from the border punch because I figured I could add some little pieces of this grass in the front. So we're just going to go ahead and do that quickly. And that turns out cute. Gives it a little bit more dimension and color. I'm um, trying to think if I wanted to... I was thinking maybe I would even put one piece like... Hmm, I wonder if I should pop up a piece and put it there. Hmm. Maybe I will. Just getting some pop dots, sorry. Okay. Just to see if I can pop that piece up there in that corner so it goes over the gazebo. Need to make sure it's not seen though. I want my pop dot to be visible. Hmm. Okay, that should be good. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, good. So, um, went ahead and did that, and the only other things that I really wanted to do was maybe put a couple of butterflies. Normally I would take a little bit more time to do, I should have probably stitched the clouds myself beforehand, but I didn't think of it at that point, so I didn't. Um, yeah, I think I might do one more piece of grass right there. I think that might be really cute. And then, haven't really thought about a sentiment for this card, and I have to figure out a place to put one. So I don't even have one picked out yet. I just kind of wanted to show you guys how to go about building a cute little scene card. Um, and then the only other thing that I have are some butterflies that I was thinking about using. Um, I might put one like up here on the gazebo. And I think I'm going to go ahead and use the bigger ones. I wasn't really sure if I was going to use the big ones or the small ones, but I think I'll go ahead and use this bigger one right here. I think that's kind of pretty. And I'm just trying to kind of keep it glued just in the center so that the wings will be lifted up. But it takes a minute for it to glue down well. And then I think my other butterfly is going to go on the tree. So we're going to go ahead and place that on the tree. And my timer's going to go off here in a minute, which means that I filmed for 13 minutes, so I have to start wrapping this up. Sometimes it's amazing how fast 15 minutes can go because I don't have the skills to fast forward. Um, I guess that looks pretty. I wasn't sure if I wanted to use the big butterflies or the little ones, but I kind of like that. So very quickly, I was able to build a scene card. It's very pretty and we're going to go ahead and apply it to our base and I think I'm going to go ahead and put my ATG actually right on the card rather than flipping this over and trying to fit it and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more than I normally would because it's kind of heavy so <clears throat> now this was only an eighth of an inch smaller so my border around the whole thing is going to be very small so I'm trying to figure out where I want to place that. Well, pretty close. Pretty much just like that. So the only other thing that I will probably do is put a piece of light blue paper on the inside and then a piece of white. So this way it kind of ties in the colors from the front and it makes the back of the card um, very sturdy just like the front is. So there is our simple scene card. You have a really pretty gazebo in a yard with a sky behind it and a tree, a couple of butterflies. Um, if I decide that those butterflies look too big, I might switch them out for little ones, which I have a feeling I'm going to. They just kind of look too big in proportion to the leaves on the tree. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to switch those, but um, I think it might make a big difference if I take it off and replace it with a small butterfly. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take care of that off camera. 
But